so I expect you to have the decency to do the right thing. Prove me wrong on the alt light remark. Prove to me that you are better than that. When's an apology not an apology? This is Sonic Harriet Learner PhD, author of Why Won't You Apologize? Healing Big Betrayals and Everyday Hurts, seeks to answer in her work. Now, my line of work, I don't typically reference pop psychology. Peer reviewed journal articles are my main, as they should be. But said journals can't teach us how to act. And that's why I'm turning to Harriet Learner Psychology Today article titled The Nine Rules of True Apologies as a general guideline for the do's and don'ts of an apology. To be clear, I'm not turning to said list as an objective statement about reality, but rather some simple rules to keep in mind when you want to make a sincere apology. When I first saw Woodford's Rationality Rules Debunked video appear in my feed, I had hoped for a genuine apology, something that would allow all parties involved to move forward with the healing process. This entire thing has taken a great toll not just on myself, but many others who have faced the brunt of both Woodford's fans and his friends. Sadly, I was to be disappointed. I wish Woodford had known about said list when he set about making his video, because whilst he frames this video as an apology, I had to question the sincerity of that. Was it intended as an apology and simply went wrong? Or is it just another attack? Why don't we watch now to find out? Now if you think I'm wrong on this topic, and have a better argument than those just covered, then please do let me know, as if I'm wrong, I want to know it. It's been over a month since I expressed my views on transgender women competing in athletics, and since then, I've learned a great deal. On this note, I want to sincerely thank everyone who has reached out to me lovingly, calmly, and respectfully to point out where I went wrong. If it wasn't for your charitable listening and understanding, my views may not have changed, as if all I had received is criticisms that are prefaced with accusations of transphobia. Then, since I am not and have never been transphobic, I probably would have moved on before getting to any substance. And so, to those who were respectful, thank you. Thank you for your charitable listening. I wished it went without saying that an apology should not begin with an attack against the very group you're apologising to. Sadly, as is evidenced here, what I wish and what are, are two very different things. What Woodford starts his video with is something known as tone policing, an element which has been present from the very start of this entire conversation. Tone policing is an attempt to detract from the validity of a position by attacking the tone in which it was presented, as opposed to the message itself. Now we'll discuss the approaches used throughout this ordeal and the results they produced later on when Woodford talks about the actions he's taking. But the tone policing is an action worth taking time out to address. Tone policing is a common tactic used to disempower marginalised communities and strip them of their autonomy. It tells them that allyship is something that must be bought through niceties rather than given freely on the basis that a demographic's human and civil rights are theirs by right. Quite literally. For the person utilising tone policing, there's typically zero cost involved. They have their rights, it's not like they feel impacted by the outcome. The same is not true for the people they seek to silence. And make no mistake, that is what this is. A silencing technique. And it's not something new either. In his Birmingham Jail letter, Martin Luther King Jr. stated, quote, I must make two honest confessions to you, my Christian and Jewish brothers. First, I must confess that over the last few years I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in the stride towards freedom is not the white citizens council or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically feels that he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by the myth of time, and who constantly advises a Negro to wait until a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of good will is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. End quote. And in spite of having been explicitly told by myself and others that tone policing is a weapon used to prolong injustice and therefore is arguably an act of social violence, Woodford decided to begin his apology 
in this manner, with an attack. Already that has crushed any hope of a genuine apology in this video, or seemingly any time in the foreseeable future. But whilst we're here, we may as well clear up some other things. Starting with the facts that I didn't label Woodford transphobic in any of my videos. Similarly, the ACA never called Woodford transphobic in their original public statement. Indeed, none of the statements or videos I've seen on the subject thus far appear to have called him transphobic. So the statement, as if all I had received were criticisms prefaced with accusations of transphobia, is an active misbetrayal of what has occurred. And funnily enough, after accusing the ACA of failing to supply examples of his transphobic content, Woodford fails to supply examples of the content he is referring to right here. Now a message was sent after the 10th of May, a whole month after I published my original response, I did label Woodford as transphobic. But this was based on their flippant disregard for the damage they caused as they put their correction on hold to publish a video defending his ego in less than 48 hours. He's also released videos thanking people on Twitter. People say I cannot assume Woodford's motives, and that's true. All I have to go on are his actions and inactions. Now perhaps he was misremembering me referring to him as Alt Light. Yet yeah, as referenced at the start of this video, I always held the door open to being shown wrong on that, but I couldn't ignore the ways in which Woodford has seemingly taken on board rhetoric used by people such as Ben Shapiro, as evidence clearly in my later video. This hypocrisy also ignores the facts that Woodford prefaced his original video by casting trans women as a threat. And yet, I, as with many other trans people, still watched on. We didn't stamp our feet and refuse to consider Woodford's points. And yet, that's the very thing he is saying he would have done here had it not been for the coddling he received from many of his primarily cis friends. Primarily people who have no understanding of the harm he caused. It also doesn't paint him in a very rational light. To outright refuse to consider the factual information contained in a message because the message contains criticism, because that's all this ever was. Criticism and calls for accountability. Yet as noted in my previous video, that's oppressive dogmatism to those used to getting away with everything. The last thing I'd like to note in this segment is the concept of charitable listening and how Woodford's notion of this seems entirely one-sided. When he puts out damaging content, it's the responsibility of the marginalized community hurt by said actions to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yet, for those responding to said hurt, he gets to cast us as quote, hypersensitive bullies. Woodford claims to now realize the harm he caused, but fails to consider the possibility that the tone of our responses was based entirely on said harm. So once again, it seems that it's one rule for Woodford, another rule for everyone else. Now we're less than a minute into his apology and already have these issues. And this is just the tip. Now, if you've been following me on Twitter, this video is probably a surprise to you, since I expressed there that it's going to take me a few weeks to adequately cover my mistakes, the mistakes of my critics, convey my new view, and apologize to those that I hurt. But because it's going to take such time to do my due diligence, I've decided to make my apology separate, and that's what this video predominantly is. Now, a great many of the trans community have reached out to me both privately and publicly to make clear that they were not hurt by my previous video and that they certainly didn't find it or me to be transphobic. Now, I've watched the video and I honestly don't think Woodford himself has said anything that could be construed as transphobic. Now, he made some very poor choices for clips that he used in his video and a very, very poor choice for analogy that he made in his video. But not transphobic, just a couple of blunders. And as I evidence in my response, the transphobic nature of Wood's video exists throughout it. It's not just the one bad analogy or the fact that he repeatedly uses clips of transphobic individuals misgendering trans people. Although if your video contains clips of transphobic statements you support, does that not make said video transphobic? Also, what does it say about you as a person? It's the fact that Woodford made his video from a standpoint of prejudice against trans people, the fact that he cast them as a threat to women's sports, both at the start and at the end, and that he was calling for the removal of trans people's human rights. In order to refer to this as simply a couple of blunders, one has to ignore the entirety of his video. But moving on to Woodford and what he is attempting to do here, Again, 
This should not exist in an apology. An apology is not about those you have not harmed, it's about those you have harmed. The facts that you lead with this before you go on to add, but my apology, of course, goes out to the whole of the trans community, completely undermines the sincerity of your apology. It suggests that as much as you want to pretend like you've realised you're wrong, a part of you is still trying to hold on to argue that you're not. Replace the and at the start of the sentence where you go on to discuss trans people who have messaged you in support with the word but, and the issue becomes more obvious. Now does the fact that a trans person made a video in support of you and various people claiming to be trans commented in support actually mean anything? No. The idea of tokenism or Uncle Tom is well and truly understood. We've all heard the I can't be racist because I have a black friend or I can't be sexist because I have a mum argument. It doesn't work and it's used by the lowest of the low. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. And I don't have to rely on comparisons between race and gender. I can also note the fact that during Trump's election campaign, right up to October of 2018, trans woman Caitlyn Jenner supported the Trump administration. Now are you going to look me in the eye and tell me that Donald Trump and the people he's filled the White House with are not anti-LGBT+. Now I'm not going after you as a person, merely the content you put out which has caused harm to the trans community. But the point is as bogus for you as it is for them. For a start, not every trans person has to feel impacted. Even among trans people, privilege exists. Then there's the fact that many marginalised people would rather be treated like shit as part of an in-group than targeted as part of an out-group. So you have one trans person on camera who defended you and a few anonymous comments doing the same on one hand. On the other, you have countless trans people telling you what you did was not simply problematic, but harmful. And in what was meant to be an apology, you try to stick to your case at the same time. If you can't even admit to the transphobic nature of your video, what point is your apology? It's just words you are drained of their meaning. It screams fake and nothing more. Now some people may take issue with the Trump comparison, but the fact is, this isn't the first time they've used near identical rhetoric to argue their case, as evidenced by rhetoric and discourse with these two clips. And I frequently emphasise, while many won't, the fact that there's a significant amount of Muslims that harbour harmful anti-LGBT plus views that desperately need to be addressed. I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens from the violence and oppression of a hateful foreign ideology. Believe me. Trump is not a good look for anybody. And I feel like there should be a Trump rule where if one finds themselves using the same rhetorical devices, they should really reevaluate themselves. And as someone who critiques Islam regularly, that's not an actual defense, just to make clear what I failed to do in my previous video. In fact, many of the people I see using the throwing gays from buildings argument are incredibly homophobic. They use it as a shield. Much like you and your token trans person, they see LGBT plus people as a resource to be used. Which is incredibly dehumanizing, by the way. I would say it's pinkwashing, but that typically refers to erasing past atrocities. Anyway, let's finally get to the actual apology of the video. Please know that I am truly and sincerely sorry for the mistakes that I made. Mistakes happen, and they're a critical component to learning as an individual and as a collective, but some mistakes are more hurtful than others. My failure to adequately cover the effects that HRT has on trans women was a pretty huge and embarrassing blunder, but my lack of sensitivity, endorsement of extremely insensitive statements, and indeed entire narrative was where I royally messed up. I've always tried to be an ally to the LGBT plus community and have always meant for my videos to reflect this, and so to know that my mistakes and hyperbole has likely emboldened some actual bad actors weighs heavily on me. But the weight that I feel is nothing compared to those who suffer at the hands of said bad actors. For what it's worth, I am sorry for my failure on these matters. If only you started out with this rather than with an attack on the very community you are apologising to, as well as your attempts to downplay the harm you caused. That would have gone 
a long way to adding to the sincerity you claim at the start, because as it stands, I don't hold this apology to be sincere, and I'm at the point where I'm just giving up on you. If you can't even start an apology without one last twist of the knife, how am I supposed to react? Again, I'd love for all of this to be over and for my personal health to recover, but that's not what this video has shown me. You need to learn how to make an actual apology, not for my sake as I doubt I'll ever accept what you have to say by this point, but for the sake of others. A few days ago, I demonetized the video, updated the title, pinned a comment, and donated all of the ad revenue that it accumulated to the transgender charity Sparkle. And indeed, that's also where every penny from this video will be going. What's more, once I publish my new views, I will likely unlist the old video and link to it in the description of the newly published. Well, I'm glad you've finally taken my suggestions on board, although I still do have some criticisms, such as the fact that donating the money you've made from these videos doesn't really go far enough. All that means is that for the damage you've caused, you've earned nothing, not that you're shouldering some of the burden of the harm you've caused. Though I'd like to take this opportunity to dismantle the idea that you're doing this because certain voices spoke softly to you, and to do that I'd like to go over a timeline of events as they unfurled. So this whole mess started with you publishing a video on the 29th of March, at which point it began to be used as a weapon against trans people. Several of such people sent me the video, and by April the 6th, I had my fully referenced rebuttal complete and published. What followed were two days of extreme tension between me and you, as you refused to watch more than six minutes of my video, stating that my acknowledgement of your alt-like tendencies was too insulting. Ignoring the facts you cast me and other trans people was an active threat. Two days later, we reached a sort of uneasy truce. I agreed to hold off for a while as you collected your thoughts on the matter and made a response. I sat there and did nothing as you posted comments to various videos, actively hostile towards me in agreement. After all, people had assured me that the sweeter approach would gain more ground. In the 21 days between my video and the faithless form, however, you did nothing to show genuine regret for what you did. But of course, many of the people supporting Woodford claim that it was at the Fifth's forum that Woodford had to sit down and talk to many people who made him realise his mistake. A bunch of cis people who had no understanding of the impact of what he'd done, so it's good to keep that in mind. But that's what a lot of people claim. So how did Woodford react after he returned from the Fifth's forum? Did he notice errors? Change the title? Demonetize the video? No. For two weeks, Woodford did nothing. Only after the 9th of May, when the ACA published its condemnation of his transphobic content, did Woodford act. And not by doing any of what he just listed, he acted by creating a video to defend his ego in less than 48 hours. So what did cause him to do these things? Well, after he published his video on the ACA condemnation, I changed tact. I kicked his door in and dragged him out over his total inaction, and within several days, I and various others who joined me in doing such achieved more than a month of coddling Woodford had achieved. That's the fact of what we observe with the timeline. Call out culture achieved results where sitting around on our hands and giving them the benefit of the doubt achieved nothing. It does not take weeks to change a title or demonetize a video, so these things weren't delayed responses to an earlier approach. They were immediate responses to anger. Perhaps no better example exists with the demonetization and donation aspect. Woodford was still monetizing his video right up to the 12th of May, up to the very day where I called him out on profiteering from trans suffering and demanded he donated said money. I have a screenshot from that day showing his initial correction comment whilst the video was still monetized. Also notice the throwing a shade there with the whole dishonest portrayal. So again, Woodford has not been this innocent actor. So anyway, this screenshot was taken after I made my demand, both publicly and privately. And within a few hours, said video was demonetized as a direct result of me dragging Woodford out on this. So what did his friends do? Well, they began spinning the myth that Woodford had always intended to donate the money, and that I had actually stolen the idea from him. Even though it's not mentioned anywhere in our correspondence, outside of my demands to him. So I guess I read minds now. Now when I asked for evidence of this, I received abuse from his friends. 
So as much as Woodford would like to claim that harsh criticism would have turned him away from doing the right thing, the timeline of what happened shows us a very opposite, and that's a lesson to keep in mind in future discussions on the subject. Anyhow, it's currently 3am here, and so I'm going to hit the hay. My next video will cover my mistakes as well as the mistakes of my critics, and then, in a subsequent video, I'll express my new views. At least, that's the plan. Thank you all kindly for the view, and I'll leave you with some more awesomeness from Sarah. I can do without the further argument from tokenism. I think we all got what that was about the first time. So yeah, that was Woodford's apology video. One which started out with an attack on the trans community, that was hurt by his actions and responded in an appropriate fashion, only to then go on to use a token exception as a way to downplay the harmful nature of his video. So even when apologising, Woodford can't help himself but make this all about him, which is why I don't find said apology sincere. Everything about Woodford's actions screams fake. All Woodford needed to do was put aside his ego for a single video, and he just couldn't do it. And now it's too late in my eyes. I'm done with being fucked around. Not just by Woodford, but by his friends. The person who accused me of stealing Woodford's ideas, Rachel Oates, has also taken to playing the false neutral. She claims that she supports the trans community, but refuses to stand in support of their rights. Now, she says she can't do this because she lacks enough information on the subject to make a call, which could be referenced to one or two things. First is the idea that she's simply not well versed enough on the subject to have an opinion, which is strange considering how she viciously attacks any trans person looking to hold Woodford accountable to some degree. She wants to be able to argue in defence of Woodford whilst also being discounted from supporting trans rights on the basis that she doesn't know enough. If you genuinely believe yourself not to be knowledgeable enough to speak on the subject, then do stop speaking on it as a whole. Something I noted, which people then jumped on me for, claiming that that's what she was saying. When no, it really wasn't. It's a very selective, I don't know enough to have an opinion. Then we have the facts that myself and many others have compiled the information on the matter in an accessible manner. Perhaps if she stopped attacking trans people for trying to hold Woodford accountable for his actions and actually read some of the resources supplied, she would have more knowledge on the matter. This also stinks of privilege, the idea that cis people supporting the rights of trans people is dependent on how fast they study the subject. It goes back to that Martin Luther King quote, the whole timetable of another man's freedom. Why should we have to wait for you to get off your backside to research a subject to have you support our rights? Then there's also the idea that we don't have enough data on the matter, period. This is a popular one I see a lot of Woodford supporters switch to more recently. To which I have to point out the very simple facts that a person's rights are not withheld until they are justified. The exact opposite is true. We uphold a person's rights until we have a justification not to. So for example, we discover that said person is a danger to themselves and others unless we limit said rights. Fact is, we had the exact same argument on adoption rights. Prior to us having our modern day consensus on same gender parenting, the same argument was made by people who claimed that they couldn't support gay adoption since we don't have enough evidence of the effects of same gender parenting. Again, this is a false neutral. It's designed to appear more reasonable than it actually is, so anyone who sees the methods for what they are can be denounced as unreasonable. Not only do we not strip away a person's rights, let alone the rights of a whole demographic without basis, but we also have to ask ourselves, how do we get more data? Well, by upholding said rights and monitoring their effects to see if there's any reason to change our position. But this argument actively seeks to prevent that. It's not withholding judgement until we get a better understanding, it's a call to seize all gathering of information on the matter to effectively put said rights in stasis. So these are several reasons as to why I find said position to be entirely disingenuous, and I wanted to tackle that in a video. Now I've taken to blocking various people on Twitter since I have no intent on having bad faith back and forth that will be buried within a day, and sending more of their friends to harass me over this, telling me what a wonderful person they actually are, is not going to change my perspective on that. I'm on YouTube to make videos, not to play games on Twitter, and I hope people can understand that. 
I haven't censored anyone. You all have the capacity to make videos and speak on the subject, but you don't have the right to waste my time in a conversation that seems entirely set up to hide your true intentions. The actual definition of bad faith. I need to note that since a lot of people seem to believe that bad faith simply means impolite, it really doesn't. It means hiding one's true intentions. But what do you lot think? Can you start a genuine apology with an attack on the people you are apologizing to? Should you preface your apology with examples of people who weren't hurt by your actions? Or does that detract from said apology? Why are Woodford and his friends trying to rewrite the timeline of what happened to pretend like his friends got into finally act when all evidence is to the contrary? Did I miss something you lot noticed? If so, be sure to leave us a comment down below. Now I'd like to do a call out for Carrie Wright's podcast covering the subject. She goes over ways to avoid harming marginalized communities as well as to fix things when you mess up. She also discusses her thoughts on where Woodford is at on the whole situation and why he seems to keep failing to do the right thing. So be sure to check that out. As always, please check out our other videos. You can also support Essence of Thought by Patreon and in doing so, help us reach our goal of becoming ad free. Now we'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone who's already given to the channel, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, Brad R, Mook Gay, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, Zach Braxton, Evan Heinberg, Alexander Williams, Atlas 5, and Doyle Jackson. Take care now, and we'll see you next time.